say that Unreal Tournament 3 had some pretty big shoes to fill is kind of an understatement. Unreal Tournament and also Unreal Tournament 2004 are arguably some of the best FPS games ever made and had a very dedicated online community. Unreal Tournament 3 was unleashed on the world in 2007 and it's often regarded as one of the weaker games in the series for a few key reasons. All things considered, it's not a horrible game but it isn't a particularly worthwhile entry in the series. Aside from a significant visual upgrade, it's practically inferior to the prior games in almost every single way. For starters, the game has less modes and weapons than the previous games. In the original Unreal Tournament, you had around 13 weapons. Unreal Tournament 2004 had essentially 19, though a few of those only show up in certain game modes. But still, it increased the roster from the prior game and also added in some new game modes as well, like Bombing Run, Onslaught, and Double Domination. Now in Unreal Tournament 3, there's less game modes and only 10 weapons, all of which are reused from the prior games. You've got the Enforcer Pistol, the Link Gun, the Mini Gun, the Flat Cannon, Shock Rifle, Rocket Launcher, Sniper Rifle, Buy Rifle, and the Redeemer. Lastly, there's the Avril Rocket Launcher, which only shows up in certain game modes as well, but all of these we've seen before. I guess my point is that at this point in the series, you'd really hope they'd be adding things, not removing them. Speaking of adding things, this is one of the first times we got a look at the Unreal 3 engine, and Unreal Tournament 3 truly does look incredible. The smaller sizes of some of the maps allowed for a tremendous amount of detail, and the texture work and modeling of certain environments still looks amazing. There's a little bit of character customization down to each individual piece of armor, and the sheer amount of visual options in the game's menu allows the game to be scaled back for less powerful systems. The only downside to the engine is that it didn't support anti-aliasing. There's also minor issues with texture streaming and an abundance of visual effects like Bloom that can cause your eyes to bleed, but most of these can be turned off. Again also, the music and the sound is of a very high standard as well. There's some great remixes of tracks from the prior games. The voice acting is cheesy, but it suits the theme well. And the weapon sounds are all meaty and impactful, with my favorite, the flat gun, sounding particularly brutal. It's a shame then that the core gameplay is so lackluster, thanks to some really crappy maps, sloppy weapon controls, and a much greater and I'd argue unwelcome focus on vehicles in certain game modes. Also, the whole Gears of Unreal Tournament art style and theme it seems they've focused on feels a bit out of place. The single player campaign in Unreal Tournament 3 is by far the worst in the entire tournament series, without a doubt. You play as a guy named Reaper, yes, Reaper, like could they have picked a more try-hard edgy name to use? How about Psycho, Blade, Razor, Scar, or Crash, you know, spelt with a K? Anyway, Ripper's colony is attacked by some interplanetary assholes, and after he recovers from a near-death attack, himself, his sister, and some buddies join up with a faction called the Izanagi to take down those responsible. How do they do this? Well, I'm glad you asked. They do this by flying from location to location and taking place in Capture the Flag and warfare matches against bots. That's literally the whole campaign. I'm not saying the whole televised deathmatch theme they had in the prior game was going to win any awards, but it didn't take itself seriously, and that was the whole charm of it. If only the story here was the main issue, but it's not. Unlike the prior games, you get no control over what matches you're playing. You just go through each of them one by one, progressing through the 50 or so to complete the campaign. There's no real sense of progression or completion, you just kind of go from one match to the next. There's four difficulty modes, casual, normal, hard, and insane, which just seems weird considering the instant action mode still retains the original bot difficulty settings from the prior games. So just what these difficulty modes are affecting is never told. You also get no control over which bots are put on your team either. There's no customization or statistics for their basic abilities. You just get whoever the game wants you to have, and they're often quite useless in a support role and also useless on bigger maps where they seem to get lost or confused. Double kill. But that's all right, we can overlook the campaign, because only morons play Unreal Tournament for its single-player campaign, right? The whole point of the series is the offline matches you can set up against bots and the online mode. Well, thankfully, the offline mode is still pretty solid, even if it has been stripped back somewhat. Here we have eight different modes, most of which again we've seen before. You've got your deathmatch, your team deathmatch, capture the flag, etc. Though for reasons unknown, they've removed invasion, mutant, bombing run, domination, and assault. I'd argue Bombing Run and Assault were some of the more enjoyable game modes from the prior game, so to remove them is just kind of baffling. Onslaught is replaced by Warfare, which is the same in essence, where you drive around large maps in vehicles and try to take over nodes. I'm not sure why they've changed the name, but it makes more sense in removing all of those other game modes. 
You know the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Well, what about the saying, if a game mode has been in three prior games, don't remove it? How about that saying? Still though, this is where you'll probably spend the most of your time. Creating your own custom matches against bots across all the different game modes with mutators and whatnot is a huge time sink and still damn good fun. It has around the same amount of maps to play with as the Pry games, at least if you've bought the Black Edition, and there's a few new vehicles to play with in Warfare, so it can take a fair bit of time to learn the ropes for all the stuff they've added in. And you'd assume by this point that they've pretty much refined all of these modes and mechanics. Well, not really. Warfare, for instance, still kinda blows at times. I mean, this is the mode that's a recycled version of Onslaught, though it still has similar issues that Onslaught had in Unreal Tournament 2004. One of the new additions, aside from the vehicles and the maps, is the hoverboard and the power orb. The hoverboard can be used to traverse the maps a little bit faster than on foot, though if you're hit by enemy fire when riding it, you fall off it and lose control for a few seconds, kind of making it, well, pointless to use at times. The power orb allows you to instantly power up a node, which in essence I guess is supposed to make the matches faster, but I found it actually has the opposite effect. Where you'll spend all this effort whittling down a power node, then some jackass on the other team comes along and captures it back instantly with an orb. And as a result, stalemates become even more common than they were before. This next point might just be me, but it feels like the AI seems a lot dumber than it was in the prior games as well. I mean, don't get me wrong, they'll still kick your ass, but they seem a bit stupid when it comes to assisting you during modes like Capture the Flag and Warfare. Watching how quickly they run for all the best vehicles is just infuriating. I mean, I actually hurt my wrist from slamming my computer table at one point because I just got sick of how they'd steal a vehicle the second it respawned. Now these minor annoyances don't make Unreal Tournament 3 a bad game, but it's just after how solid and enjoyable the previous game was, you'd kind of expect them to improve the foundation they'd set, not trip and stumble. And the omission of some of the game modes is also kind of insulting. When Unreal Tournament 3 first came out, it got pretty glowing reviews from critics, but the truth as they say is in the pudding, and if you spend any real time reading about the game online, you'll probably see more people disappointed than praising it. And I can say that everyone I've spoken to seems to think it's the worst of the bunch. I know for me personally that every time I've reinstalled it, I've never been bothered to play it for more than a few hours before I ended up just quitting and uninstalling. It just doesn't have the lasting power and the effect the other games had, with most players abandoning ship soon after it was released and going back to Unreal Tournament 99 or 2004. But that's not to say it had no effect on the gaming industry, Unreal Tournament 3 helped solidify the Unreal 3 engine as the sort of go-to engine for developers, and we're still getting games coming out in 2016 that run off it. Its legacy might not have been the same as the other games, but it offered a platform or a canvas for other people to create their own games and tell their own stories, and I've kinda gotta give them props for that. If I had to pick a favourite out of the whole series, I'd still go with the first game. The original is always the best, and it's a testament to how good that game is that it's still largely playable almost 20 years since its original release. If you really want to check Unreal Tournament 3 out though, the Black Edition is the definitive version to get. It will still offer up a good 20 or so hours of content and is easy to get running on modern operating systems. Red team wins the match.